What's up YouTube? This is DEFCON 3 Security coming at you from somewhere here on Spaceship Earth. I know it's been like two months since I've posted a video. Uh, maybe even longer than that. No reason. Honestly, no particular reason other than if I did have an excuse, it's probably because I've been working a lot. Um, you know, usually to make a video, I'm in my vehicle. And if I'm working in a dangerous area, uh, I generally don't hang out in my vehicle. So um, the site, the last site that I was at was really, really dangerous. Um, not to say that my current site isn't, but um, it's really dangerous, okay? And then um, the contract expired, which happens a lot in the security industry. You'll be at a contract for a year or two or five, and then some other company will come in and lowball them and give them bad service and uh, in the interim you'll be without that contract for a while so now I could talk about my last site a little bit since um, since we no longer have that uh, site um, it was pretty dangerous I kid you not um, I'd say in three months I had gosh I'm, I'm just trying not to exaggerate here, but I'm trying to be, you know, just give you kind of a round number. I'm thinking in three months I had 15 to 20 guns pointed at me. Like literally people roll up in their vehicle, window comes down, and a firearm points at me. And I respond by pulling out my firearm or in uh, some cases even shooting back, believe it or not. Um, look it up. It's all... A matter of public record if you uh, if you don't believe me but um, yeah my job was really dangerous you know I get a lot of people in the comments telling me I look like a joker dressed up in a vest and having ammunition and a gun on my side and all this nonsense you know you're just security what are you doing looking like a, a person from SWAT team um, yeah work in my at my site for like two days and see how you feel um, the last incident, well, one of the last incidents I had before we left, um, they tried to hit <clears throat> a dispensary up the street from us, and one of the guards pulled out their gun and it got all chaotic. Then they rolled to the corner, the bad guys, they all opened up their window, and next thing you know, laser pointers. And when I say laser pointer, I'm not talking about the ones that you play uh, with your cat with, but rather laser sighting on a firearm was pointed at all the guards so I just sort of peep out to see what's going on and a laser dot hits me and just kind of grazes upon my chest and at that point I just backed up and said damn let me let me call up my dispatch and let them know what's transpiring so um, this was on a daily basis guys um, maybe sometime in the future I'll post some some video on that but for now uh, just take my word for it if you really have doubts, shoot me an email. I'll send you a clip, but I'm not going to post it on YouTube, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, there was no consequence for these bad guys. They would literally assault people, break windows. Uh, they were called bippers. I don't know where they came up with that name, but in San Francisco particularly, they call these people bippers. And what they do is they do smash and grabs. They'll roll up on a car guys will jump out they will bash in the window grab your luggage grab your phone out of your hand point a gun at you while they're doing it so that you don't fight back uh, if you happen to be in a car and then take off and it would hit the same area the same vehicle would hit the same area 15 to 30 times a day and I'll call the cops and the cops will do absolutely nothing because they can't do anything their hands are tied um, whenever a police officer happens to see one doing it they will literally try to chase them and then the department will call off the chase because after you get like 10 miles over the speed limit uh, it's considered dangerous to the public so they tell the police just call off the chase I've actually um, I'll never forget I was at work and I, I use this app called Citizen App, and it tells you all these crimes that are being committed uh, in real time. And um, I'm watching this 
uh, message come through and saying that, oh, there's an incident two blocks away from you, and I see this car just speed past me at probably 60, 70 miles an hour, and then like eight seconds later, the police cars are chasing them. So I'm like, wow, it's it's probably a bipper, and it was because the bippers cars are always like Audi, Mercedes, um, Jaguars, uh, usually really high end luxury cars, all tinted window, including the front window, all tinted out, and you could, I mean, you could spot them a mile away, or at least I could. And anyway, so I see this car drive by super fast, cop cars are chasing them, and I'm like, oh crap, it's a bipper. And I've always wanted to see one of these, I'm going to not say the word because <laughs> it's a family friendly channel. Um, I've always wanted to see one of these knuckleheads get caught and just dragged out of the car so I can laugh at them. And um, well, it didn't happen that night. Um, I was listening to the police dispatch. They said, let's deploy road spikes to blow the tires out on this car. I was super excited, so I got behind the cop cars and followed them, at, at, but not at, you know, 70 miles an hour, but just kind of like going in their direction, and I'm listening to police dispatch, and the next thing you know, they go, call off the chase, it's uh, too dangerous, and they had to pull in the road spikes, and these guys got away, which just pissed me off. There were families that were like so impacted by these people, they are absolutely just savages what they do out there you've got families that will never be the same people have been like so devastated by some of these strong armed robberies um and these guys just they there's rap songs that literally encourage bippers to break windows there's one called i think it's called click in here and the whole song is about the bippers in san francisco breaking windows and punching people's mothers out and that's exactly what they do. So, I mean, I mean, just like, I, I guess I'm just ranting because I just get so pissed off. So, this is what happened more recently. There is a Honda, I think it's called a or a Nissan Crossover or Honda Crossover. One of those two. It's like an SUV. Um, this jackass has been known to just hit the area all the time. Um, cops can't get them because... They're not allowed to chase them. Anyways, and now we're talking to San Francisco. You can look up the article. <laughs> this jackass was assaulting some lady to break into her car, him and his crew. Then she tried to fight back and try to like pull her luggage back from the dude. The dude knocked her out and she was screaming. And then just to like add insult to injury, he ripped her dress off and started saying bad stuff like, bitch, you know, don't. Don't ever try to F with me again. And um, I just couldn't believe that, right? So he did all of that. Cops were called. You know, they asked, did you get a description? You, you know, it's, it's the same car, the same crew. Um, and sure enough, they got the guy description and the vehicle and the plates. By the way, the plates come back from a stolen vehicle. So the plates do you no good. Like literally, their license, so let's say they have a Mitsubishi Eclipse. The license plate will come back to a Toyota Tundra. So they just go on the street and randomly rip off plates and put it on their vehicle. So the license plate does absolutely no good. But the vehicle description, uh, that helps. You know, so if, if you say, hey, it's a Mitsubishi crossover, all blacked out windows, then they kind of have some idea of what they're looking for. Anyways, this Mitsubishi finally got caught in San Francisco. Four days later, after they ripped that lady's dress off, um, they... They tried to catch them and lost them five different times in one day. You would think that after the cops chase you once, you're just going to call it a day and go home. No. These idiots got chased five times that day in San Francisco. And finally, some unclothed, or what do they call that? Unmarked police vehicles, but plain clothed. There you go. Plain clothed officers saw these jackasses unloading their um, luggages in the alley that they stole from people in bags, just dumping them out and trying to find money and then leaving the rest of the stuff and uh, confronted them. Somehow, one of these guys got shot in the wrist, not the cops, but the bad guys. And he started screaming bloody murder like, oh my God, you shot me, I'm gonna die. And Read the article, it's called, uh, just type in 
chief of police San Francisco apologizes to car thieves because that's exactly what happens in the end. So anyways, they arrest this guy and um, his homeboys got away in that uh, white Nissan crossover. They got away with the car. Um, when, once they got away, they continued later that day to continue robbing people and causing mayhem. Even after their boy just got shot, they're like, the, the show must go on. So they continued robbing the play, you know, random cars and stuff throughout the day. And then they did that for the week and then they disappeared for a week. And then they just hit, um, they just hit another site yesterday. So, um, anyways, so now they got this guy in custody, right? Now the city is protesting because... Literally, if you read the article, it says police chief apologizes for guy getting or thief being shot in the wrist. And if you read the article, it says this 23 year old kid will never be able to work again. I swear to you, you can read the article. It says this 23 year old kid will never be able to work again because the cop shot his wrist. And I'm thinking, what job? What, what are they talking about? This guy literally ripped some lady's dress off punched her robbing cars just you name it and and they call him a 23 year old kid like my goodness it's it's a you cannot win this game the cops have no power the thieves just run rampant um as a guard if i were to deploy my weapon and hit one of these guys i can assure you it would be game over for me just seeing how the current environment is it would be game over. So where does that leave me? That leaves me second guessing whenever there's an incident. Whenever something bad happens, I have to think, well, can I shoot this guy or not? You know, not that I'm hoping for something like that, but it's just not me, but it's just guards and officers and even homeowners that, that are victims of home invasions. You you gotta start thinking ahead. Like, can I can I use stopping force right or some would call it deadly force um to stop yourself from being taken out um it has this videos all over the place i'm sorry guys it's 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 more of an emotional video i don't have you know normally i try to keep things kind of consistent but i'm all over the place but yeah so i'm reading this article here and it's just pissing me off and then um I'm no longer at that site. There is a new company. And um, the guards that used to be up the street from us sent me a photo yesterday. One guy randomly sent me a photo and said, Hey, man, uh, we got hit big time yesterday. They literally, the same crossover, the Nissan crossover, pulled in front of us. Guns came out. And there was nothing we could do. And I don't, I'm going to try to upload the video. Not the video. the uh, A still image of the scene. And you'll see this guy's gun. It's a, it's like a Glock. And the magazine is probably this long. So it's probably got 40 rounds in it. If not more. It could be double stack. It could be 50 or 100 rounds. But either way. That's the firepower he's got. Pointed at some dude with his hands up in the air inside the car. Another dude's busting the back window and pulling out his luggage. And then you've got a, another dude behind the car pointing his gun. And then you got the driver of the uh, Nissan crossover. Uh, waiting to get away all this happens within like 10 to 15 seconds um, and there's nothing anybody can do I mean there's something we can do but the way the current law is set up everybody's hands are tied um, so at the end of the go uh, day guys just just be safe and uh, I don't know I'm curious does this happen in your area too do they do they allow this to happen? Um, are cops hands tied just like we are here in California? Uh, let me know. Um, yeah, I'm going to start trying to make videos again. Uh, it's just been frustrating. You know, update on me. I'm the uh, area manager of my company. Uh, well, it's not my company, but I work for a company. I got promoted to area manager pretty quickly. I'm learning a lot about how to run a um, security company, the ins and outs. 
Uh, I've been reading this book right here. I'm just going to drop this guy's name real quick. His name is Sean Edward Sundahl. He sent me this book for free. Really awesome guy. And um, I'm going to talk about this book a few times. I haven't actually finished reading it, but when I do, I will um, let you know my thoughts on it. But so far, it is absolutely amazing. If you're trying to get a PPO license, right, start your own security company, this is the book to have. It has scenarios, case scenarios, test questions, possible test questions. Um, and this book is big. It's 350 pages. I'll give you a link to his website. Uh, for example, um, let's, let me give you a possible test question here. When an employee commits a minor policy violation, the best way to correct the issue is through written reprimand, suspension, democratic discipline or progressive discipline right you would think that it's I don't know I would want to say it's um, democratic discipline but the answer is progressive discipline so you know you may think you know all the answers to security questions but uh, not not necessarily uh, let's give one more question here if BSI has sent you a letter stating that your security officers license is suspended Due to the conviction of a crime, you may have to do which of the following? A. Wait for further direction from BSIS. B. Suspend the security officer's employment. C. Give the officer a 90-day suspension. D. Contact an attorney. The answer is suspend the security officer's employment. That one may see kind of self-explanatory, but if you really like read into it too much, one might think, well, let's just uh, give them a 90-day suspension or wait to see what the BSIS is going to say about it. So... Again, guys, it's called the Private Patrol Operator. This is the second edition. It's from Sean Edward Sundahl. Uh, I'll leave you a link to the description uh, to um, how to find this book. But um, otherwise, just look it up yourself. This is one of the only books that I know of uh, online that basically runs you through possible test questions, teaches you scenarios, teaches you etiquette, teaches you how to be a better guard, um, how to do the HR portion of um, security uh, and it goes in a lot more things than that includes over 100 final exam questions all right guys so he sent me this book quite a while back I haven't forgot about you Sean um, I just when I do a, a review I really want it to be good and you know worth your time for sending me the book I don't want to just throw something together so uh, as promised I'd mentioned your book uh, you definitely put a lot of work in here certainly do appreciate it I've sent a few guys your way. Um, guys, this guy, he, 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 check it out. Hey, listen, if you woke up this morning and you were upset to go to work because you're not making enough, that's nobody's fault but your own. Keep that in mind. Know your worth, know your value, value your time. Above all, be safe.